So during part three, you are going to have many graphs and figures that are going to be shown to you. And simply, they may ask, describe them. What is its clinical significance? So something similar to this, where they may say, what does the graph depict? What do the four curves represent? What is the cancer mortality risk according to BEER5? And what model do we utilize in our clinic? So hopefully after reading radiobiology or even con, you could recognize that this is a essentially a low dose cancer risk model graph. So on the bottom here, we are going to have dose and on the y axis, we're going to have cancer induction risk. So you want to cover all of these certain lines. In the beginning, we're going to start with A. So A is the hypersensitivity model. This says that low doses don't induce cell repair mechanisms, and they result in increased mutation risk compared to larger doses. So at low doses, you are seeing a greater risk than any of the other models. So this is the most conservative which is, it's, it's called hypersensitivity. So it makes sense that some, depending on what you look at, even have a much more exaggerated bow line like this, but that is what you're going to look for in hypersensitivity. Now, if we look at B, this is kind of just a single straight, positively sloped line. This is the linear no threshold model. Now this is the assumed model. And it says that every radiation exposure, regardless of how small, does have some risk associated to it. Now, it's not as conservative as the hypersensitivity model, as we see, but it's kind of the average of all of the other models. And it is the one that we base our clinics off of, which right here is our fourth question. So we use linear no threshold, and it also is kind of the basis for ALARA. Now on C, we have what is called the threshold theory. So this says that at essentially low levels of radiation, the body can sustain a certain level of radiation damage and repair it, which we're seeing here in the lower levels. But then obviously as dose increases, at some point the body can't repair that and you get an increased cancer risk. And finally, we have line D, which is hormesis. And this says that actually at low levels of radiation, this reduces spontaneous cancer rates because the cells repair themselves and that begins, which normally that repair mechanism would be dormant. So at low levels of radiation, your cancer risk actually is decreased. And then at a certain point, of course, cancer risk does increase. So this model is definitely the most liberal. It's also one of the more, I guess, less approved and kind of more not necessarily controversial, but interesting theories that we have available. The cancer mortality risk here. So this is broken into acute and chronic. So if we are looking at acute exposures, this is 8% per sievert. And if we are talking about chronic, we are going to have a 4% per sievert. So these questions are just a sample of what may be asked in radiobiology, but it's good to have questions like this, answer them directly briefly and concisely, but thoroughly also add in some extra snippets. That way you get some of those bonus points, but you don't want to ramble or spend too much time on these, especially when you know the information, you know that graph. Like I said, be concise, add in some interesting details that are relevant, get those bonus points, and then move on to other and tougher questions. If you have any questions, please comment them in the bottom. Thank you for watching. Happy studying.